Hey guys, it's Crazy Comic Lady here and today I'm going to be reviewing a set of 80 Touch 5 alcohol markers that I got given for Christmas. So they come in this really nifty little travel case which is really good for, for portability. Um, so one thing I did notice about this case is that it is actually quite flimsy. Um, I did find that as soon as you started taking markers out of it they tended to fall all over the place and fall out the sides and, and it was a bit of a pain so I actually reinforced this carry case with bits of cardboard around the edges to make it um, a lot more sturdy and I put the cardboard all the way around it to keep the markers kind of secure in the case. Um, at the moment this set is retailing for about £34 on Amazon so that works out at roughly 43p a marker so price wise they're a really great alternative to to Copic markers when you consider a Copic marker is around £5 a marker so one thing I did notice about this set, and I'm assuming it's actually an error, is that I did receive two of the exact same greys. Um, so as it's a set of 80 markers, I'm assuming I probably should have received a, a different type rather than two BG3s. Um, but since I don't know anyone else who's got this marker set, I can't tell you if that's an error or, or just a one-off, or if it's in other sets. So these markers, they're, they're white like the Copic ones and they have a broad nib and a fine nib so I'll show you the broad nib it's kind of the standard broad nibs that you get on all alcohol markers really um, the fine nib is quite interesting because it's it's quite a bullety nib if you compare it to um, say Copic markers or Letraset markers so I have a Copic marker here for you to see again so you can see that they're there really is quite a difference in thickness between the two nibs um, and the same goes for the Letraset Pro markers as well uh, with the Pro markers you can see that the Pro Narc nib is is much thicker than the Copic nib but it's still a lot less thick than the Touch 5 marker I'd say in kind of comparisons the Touch 5 marker nib is much similar to a Sharpie nib than it is to a Copic marker or a Letraset marker um, they're much more kind of thick and chunky as opposed to the, the thin details that you can get with the with the Copics or the Letraset markers. Just as a quick comparison you can see how the nibs all look next to each other so you can see with that's the Touch 5 marker nib it came out quite quite thick and fast as opposed to you can get really fine lines with with the Copic markers so if you were just filling, filling in large areas of colour then, then the Touch 5 marker will do you fine. Um, it's the same again with, with the Letra set ones, you can get very thin lines with the, with the fine nib and Sharpie ones it comes out much, you can still get fine lines but it's much thicker in the way it comes out, it feels a lot more like a, a, the Touch 5 marker so let's try and, that's probably, that's the thinnest line you can make with a touch 5 marker so they are quite thick and chunky in comparison so if you were doing really tiny pictures with really small details then I would recommend these two so if you're doing stuff like um, making stamps for, for greeting cards then I'd stick with these ones but if you're a beginner artist who wants to colour large pictures then definitely consider these because you can fill up very large areas of colour and this is just printer paper that I'm using to demonstrate this on. Um, you can also see as well that they do bleed a lot more than than the than the Copics or the Letra Set markers as well. So bear that in mind if you're working on just printed paper then you're going to have some bleeds so don't go all the way up to the lines of your picture. So, so these are the colours that come actually in this set. Um, I did find that a lot of the reds tended to be quite similar when you look at them, they're only like a tiny shade different. Um, another thing I also noticed with the colours as well was um, some of the markers actually felt slightly underfilled uh, compared to the others, so if you were laying down really thick layers of, of colour they didn't seem to want to flow out too well, um, but you do get a nice selection of colours in general, like you do get a lot of good skin tones. Unfortunately you don't get a whole lot of purples, so if you're wanting to like blend in purples with skin tones it, you're going to have trouble there because you only really get... Well this one it says pale purple, I, I'd say that was more like a hot pink to be honest, 
but yeah you get very few in in the purple purple lines um, you do get quite a few blues that look very similar to each other um, and then again you get a selection of greys which are quite useful and a black so just as a quick test to see how well they blend I've grabbed three blues that are kind of similar-ish to each other but um, enough of a distance that they they should prove a little bit of a challenge to blend nicely so we'll start with the royal blue and see how this goes next is sky blue and baby blue so even on just regular printer paper you can see the you can still see the lines that are between the two colors so they haven't blended into each other all that well even on this kind of marker paper if i saturate it a bit more you can then get them to blend into each other not too bad so if we try some colors that are completely completely different okay so i'm going to give it a try with wine red terracotta and sand and see how well these ones all go together so there's the wine red they all come out quite fast and thick and terracotta oh this marker is kind of dead and i've never used it before so that's not a good sign for blending and finally sand uh, this marker is also dead, so that's not encouraging for this set so far. You do get what you pay for, I'm afraid. Um, so, okay, let's try some different markers. Let's go with... Okay, let's go with Deep Violet, Pastel Purple and Vivid Purple and see how this goes. So, this is Deep Violet. Or, no, is it Deep Violet? Yeah, Deep Violet. This one's also feeling a bit dry and I've never used it. Um, next we'll go with Vivid Purple. Oh, this one's much juicier. And finally, Pastel Violet. Is that what I said originally? It's the one I picked out. So, oh, that's very fluorescent. And again, this one feels not as juicy as the first couple. If I blend it a bit like that, they do it does sort of start to merge together but it's also damaging the paper so oh and putting it on top of the deep violet has tended to change the color a lot it's gone very pink so those ones didn't blend too well at all so i'd say the blues blend pretty well and i know that the skin tones blend all right so it's a bit hit and miss with this set so far just to show what I mean about the bleed over, these are some doodles that I did a while ago and you can see, especially in this pink picture here, how it's bled into the sides of the picture. Even though I didn't colour right up to the lines, it still bled over into the picture. And the same with this little misty one as well, it, it bled quite badly and I went over it with a white marker to, to hide all the bleed over. But So if you're using these markers in, say, a sketchbook, you're going to end up with a, a lot of bleeding problems. This was one I tested on gold line marker paper and um, it was a little bit odd here that this originally when I coloured this picture was a completely flat colour. Um, these marks have suddenly appeared for some reason, I'm not sure how that's happened. So I'm not sure if perhaps these markers aren't as light fast as, as say Copics are and that's just naturally faded away. Um, but you can see here on this marker paper that I did have a lot of trouble getting the colours to blend into each other so if you want very soft blending in in your pictures then perhaps these markers aren't great for that kind of level of detail although when it comes to the skin the skin did blend quite nicely with the various purples and, and skin tones that were in the set um, these are a couple more uh, doodly examples that i did on gold line marker paper and if you're doing just kind of block shell shading like a bit with this picture then the markers actually come out quite well if you're just doing kind of color studies and stuff then these markers work really well as just a a quick color in your sketch kind of thing to give you a, a color reference so they're very useful for just coloring in pictures very quickly so as a portable set they work really they're quite a good portable set to have um, 
From what I can see, you can't get refills for these markers and they're actually quite difficult to buy replacement markers if you run out. I have found on eBay that if you want to buy a replacement marker, you can get them from Taiwan from about £1.50 a marker. Uh, but I would say if your marker runs out, then you probably, it might be better then to just upgrade to the Copic marker once the marker runs dry. Um, or Electroset one, because you'll get kind of basically the same result. And an Electroset marker these days goes for around £2. You can get them on, on eBay for sometimes even less than that. So they're quite cheap getting pro markers now. Um, although the newer ones are by Windsor and Newton, not by Electroset. So for my final uh, test of these markers, I'm going to try them on this Canson Bristow board just to see what they're like on on decent cardstock to see if they blend well on that. So here's the finished picture that I did with the Touch 5 markers. If you'd like to see the full inking and colouring process of this picture, there'll be a separate speed paint video on my channel, which will also list all of the colours that I used um, in creating this picture. So yeah, I did actually have a lot of trouble with colouring this mushroom just because there aren't many pale colours to try and blend out the harsher tones. So I did end up having to use my Copic Colourless Blender just to try and get a smoother edge on some of these lines. Um, I also had the same problem with the hair as well. So I also struggled with this background when I was uh, doing it in green to do the grass. I did end up saturating the paper too much to try and blend it together with greens. So it ended up going quite blotchy around this part of the picture. Luckily I managed to hide that with white gel pen so it's not very noticeable. But you can kind of see what I mean if we look at the old blending swatches that we made, especially on, on this one, you can kind of see how the colour's been lifted and it's gone a bit splotchy. Um, so that's the kind of problem I did have in this corner that I ended up hiding with the white gel pen. I also really struggled with getting these wings to blend together because there weren't really enough pale colours to really get the wings to blend that well. So I did struggle a bit with with blending. Um, it was also interesting that the green that I used for this top bit, the the marker nib was actually slightly different to all the other nibs in the set. It's actually much lower in in like the, the holder. So the ink came out much better and much juicier and it was actually a nicer a nicer kind of feel to it. Um, the other markers when I was doing it on this card it had a kind of feeling of using felt tips, it had that sort of feel to it, which was uh, a little odd, but you kind of get used to it and I still think you can do good pictures with these markers. So uh, I have a little fact sheet here for my final thoughts. For the Touch 5 markers I did some little digging around and found that you can actually get them for as low as one pound and 2p if you're willing to buy them from China and Pro Markers are actually now retailing at £1.49 and Copic Markers, the cheapest that I could find them at the moment was £4.39 on a site called cultpens.com so value wise they're still probably the best but ink wise I don't think they last that long because I actually found that my skin marker was dying during colouring this picture which made it quite difficult to kind of blend the skin together like on the arms so um, I don't think the ink in these last particularly well so for blending I'd say I think I'd give it a five and that I feel a bit mean giving it a five because you can blend the lighter colors and the greens were pretty good um, at blending most of them anyway uh, but I mean compared to like Copic gets a 10 because Copics just blend brilliantly and I say even pro markers get a 9 because they have such juicy ink that if you layer enough colour you can get most pro markers to, to blend. I do struggle with pro marker greens but that could be just me. Um, as far as bleeding goes I'd, I'd say touch 5 markers get a 7 because even on the cardstock they did tend to bleed a little bit into her face and into the, the top of her, her arm sleeve thing and that was even being really careful they did blend a bit uh, bleed a bit into into her clothes so they get a seven it's not that bad if you're using it on cardstock if you're using it on on sketchbooks or or printed paper it's it's going to bleed a lot but 
otherwise it's not that bad and i'd give pro marker a nine um i'd say copic get a 10 color range copic definitely gets the 10 because they've got over 300 colors i'd say pro marker get a nine because even though they don't have as many colors as the copic range there's still an awful lot to choose from uh touch five i'm gonna say maybe a five slash six i'm i'm not sure it's just a lot of these colors are so similar i actually tried to use both these blues when i was coloring her wings and they they were pretty much identical like there was no difference in these color blues when i was trying to do it in the picture they were so so similar and the same goes for a lot of these these other like skinny colors as well they're all they're so samey that even though there's a lot of markers then there's not actually that much variety um the greens are really good though i did like the greens but so yeah i'm gonna give it a five five or six maybe for color range so final thoughts on on the touch five markers i'd say would i buy them for myself no i don't think i would would i buy them for beginners wanting to improve i'd actually probably say no i think a beginner should buy the pro markers because uh even though they're slightly more expensive but they're just they're better the ink lasts longer and it'll give you a better feel for what alcohol markers are like um, without having to spend the ludicrous price of one Copic sketch marker, which is almost five pounds. So I'd recommend the Pro markers and I wouldn't really recommend the Touch 5 markers. Would I buy them as a gift for someone to have fun with? Then yes, I would buy them as a gift for someone because uh, artists love experimenting with, with new things and I enjoyed using them even though they're not as good as my other markers, but they come in a nice travel case so I can take them with me where I want to go for a quick little doodle. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my review of these markers. Uh, let me know if you want any more reviews in the future and go and check out the speed paint of this picture if you're interested. And thanks so much for watching everyone. Bye.